Welcome to the 16th season of The Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Our panel includes Neil Riddell of the Altoona Mirror, Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com, Sports Director Casey Kantz of WTAJ Sports, and a special guest analyst each week. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Doctors Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue in Altoona, just ask rental. By the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid healthcare professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South of Altoona, ask for us by name. By JMP Auto, home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. All righty, welcome inside another edition of the Nitwits. Casey Kantz alongside the usual cast, Neil Riddell from the Altoona Mirror, Mark Brennan from FightOnState.com, and we welcome back our good friend Mike Irwin. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you, Casey. It's good to be back. And it's a good week to be back. Obviously, no football game this past week, but that didn't mean there were any shortage of storylines. Let's start with you, Mike. Uh, the big storyline, and this was uh, just great news for Penn State, the football program, everybody associated with the football program, is the NCAA announcing the restoration of scholarships beginning next year for Penn State. What were your initial thoughts when you heard that news Tuesday Well, morning? obviously, I was real happy that they made that decision. I mean, I mean, I think O'Brien was battling with one arm tied behind his back. So to open it up and give him, you know, 75 scholarships, then 80, and then 85, and in about three years, we'll be back to, uh, you know, the full uh, complement of scholarship players. Now, I still, I mean, you know, you could go with this. I mean, it's a positive for mm -hmm. Penn State, and I think for the fans, the players, and the coaches that, now they can do a little few more things with that. I think it's great. Yeah, um, and so it'll be two years that they've really had to operate with less than, they, they're down to 75 now, 71, 75, but really it'll only end up being 2004, because they wanted to start it this year, but then were yeah. denied that. So it's really 2014 and 2015 that they'll be somewhat shorthanded. And, uh, you know, he's already proven that he can really maximize a smaller roster. But I think there was the real potential for erosion of, uh, you know, when you, when you see some depth uh, issues and injuries, we've already seen that this year. And I also wonder how much this was gonna eventually wear him down. And I think this is such a breath of fresh air. Mark, yeah. you're, you're very familiar with recruiting and that was one of the big, you know, words that was used uh, this entire week regarding this whole announcement. Yeah, I mean, you go from being able to assign 15 guys to being able to assign, you know, 20 and, and potentially with gray shirts and early enrollees, uh, they could even sign so, some more guys, uh, depending on when different kids would enroll. Uh, I think Neil hits on a very good point, though, that we weren't really going to see the strongest impact of these sanctions, I don't think, for a couple of years. Mm -hmm until they went through a couple of recruiting cycles that were that they had less and less numbers. And what this does is allow them to keep stocking up on players. And the thing is, they've recruited real well. They've still recruited, you know, outstanding players. It's a matter of when you're only signing 15 and everybody else is signing 25, that really is going to hurt you. And I think a couple things. Number one, uh, this makes it a more attractive job for Bill O'Brien for the long haul. And number two, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if anybody else thinks this, but to me, this is a tacit admission by the NCAA that, that they overstepped their bounds uh, with, the, with the way they sanctioned this in the beginning. Let's start, let's, let's go to, that'll be our next point. Uh, just to recap, Penn State will get back up to the max of 85 by 2016, which is uh, a good thing. But uh, Mike, did this change your impressions at all of uh, NCAA President Mark Emmer with this announcement on Tuesday? Not really, I think they're covering for a mistake. I mean, I still think, I, like, I think the other sanctions should be 
removed also. I think the next one they were talking about was the bowl, bowl game, games, yes. which takes a certain amount of revenue away from Penn State. And, you know, the $60 million obligation, I mean, they haven't budgeted on that. And then Joe Paterno's wins, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, what affects the immediate team of the scholarships and what's happening at Penn State. So for the president, that was a good move. But I still don't feel that the NCAA was, you know, fair with Penn State on this whole thing. I mean, I think the free report was had its share of problems, and I think we could talk about that for a long time. But uh, I really think they're punishing the wrong people and to take away the wins from Joe Paterno. As somebody said, they'd like to see that statue of Joe Paterno back down there at Beaver Stadium because the guy lived his life there from 1950 to 2013. So I would like to see it restore his wins. And, and frankly, I mean, they, they took him away from 98, and this thing didn't even happen to one. And Sandusky was gone from the program at that time. Anyway. Yeah, I think that was the, you know, going the whole way back to 98 was one of the questionable things. I'd like to see what happens with all this uh, lawsuits and trial and see how all that plays out before uh, any definitive um, you know, decisions are made relative to the statue. And I mean, this, this whole thing obviously has just been such an ongoing uh, crisis. And, and, you know, finally there was uh, some, some good news. But I also think it speaks to the level of person that Penn State was able to get in George Mitchell yeah. and the work that he has done with the NCAA. And I think that's a credit to Penn State. Yeah, the whole thing about, about Joe's legacy, you know, I completely get that, but that's going to take care of itself with time. And there will be no better sign of the great things that Joe Paterno did than if this program comes on strong in the next couple of years, because that's going to prove that he built an indestructible foundation. And that's really what it's about, the academics, the athletics, all those things that people will be able to balance those against whatever else may come out in trials or whatever else. So I, I agree with you, Mike, that the key thing here was getting the sanctions lifted, number one, or the scholarship sanctions lifted, then the bowl, and you could worry about legacies and wins later. None of that is time sensitive. This stuff was time sensitive. Yeah. Great comments here, guys, and uh, great news for Penn State all around. Let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk some football and take a look at some of the high points and low points in the first quarter of the Penn State football season. That's next. You're watching the Nitwits. Stay with us. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Drs. Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue in Altoona, just ask rental. I'm Ryan Kaiser from Repente Mini Lions. <laughs> Watching the hit wits. Have been for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we are back. It's Mike Irwin in the great lead in right there. Thanks to Ryan Kaiser as well. <laughs> Penn State three wins and one loss to the first uh, four weeks of this 2013 football season. Of course, now the going gets a little more difficult as Big Ten play starts coming up this Saturday with a trip to Indiana. So the first portion of the season, though, guys, what have we uh, liked and what do we want to see improve? First, what we've liked so far. Let's start with the true freshman quarterback, Christian Hackenberg. He's had the obvious growing pains, but uh, he's really led this uh, Penn State offense so far through four weeks. I think he's exceeded expectations, yeah. even though expectations were really high. Yeah, uh, he didn't play well against Kent State, and the, and the team uh, slipped against uh, Central Florida. But, you know, overall, I think Hackenberg is really at the top of the list of surprises. Yeah, I think the, the, the good thing about Hackenberg is that all the veteran players around him, I think, have allowed him to kind of uh, emerge and be the player that he is. And he would be the first one to say that. You have a pretty veteran offensive line, obviously a great receiver in Allen Robinson, and the backs are doing a really good job. And I like the fact that that offense have, has seemed to get progressively better mm -hmm. as the season has gone along. Mike, that chemistry he's got with Allen Robinson through uh, four weeks as well. Three so weeks. Through you know, that, <laughs> that's not right. so much in week four. Three, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. somebody reminded me the only reason he's at Penn State is because of Rob Bolden. They went to high school together. Allen Robinson. He was, or Allen Robinson. Yeah. But Bolden attracted him to come here because he was a receiver in high school. And uh, Allen Robinson, I mean, really has complimented him. And, and those outstanding receivers that they have, 
I mean, they got a, a lot of people they can throw the ball to down there. I mean, there's still people who haven't gone on the field. I, I still think about Alex Kenny with his speed and everything that they have really haven't shown much of him yet. And the other Richie Anderson yep. stepping up. I mean, they've got so many good receivers down there. Yeah. The kid, know, the kid, well, yeah. Glad Robinson didn't go to LSU then. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know, Mike. Uh, Kenny's been there, and I'm a fan of the local kid too, but it seems that uh, they either – uh, I don't think they see him in the same regard you did. He barely got in the other day. Uh, Ferguson attempted a, a pass to him late. I, I don't see necessarily right now. I meant to point a couple weeks ago about who's the next Allen Robinson of the depth that maybe you see. I see a more depth at running back and, and tight end, even yeah. though Lehman's not there. Yeah, I mean, another guy that I'd like to see maybe get involved more is Geno Lewis. He had the big catch against Syracuse, has done some good things in the return game, but I think he's a guy as a receiver who could really step up. But to your point, Neil, with the tight ends, uh, Kyle Carter was injured early in the season, and I think he was just through this last game against Kent State, just starting to kind of get back in the swing of things, and I think this bye week's going to be good for him. Yeah, you know, Lewis, you make a point. I mean, they threw him the bomb against Syracuse, but they really haven't gotten him engaged in the passing well, game. Well, you, you know, have a freshman that's, quarterback. That's yeah. what that's part of it. He's got to figure some of this stuff you out. Know, the one thing I really can't get excited about is our return team, and I said that before. And I know Lewis is on that return team, and, and they have the other walk-on or run-on. Bob Walker. Walker on there. But I, I think like an Alex Kenny could break one because of his speed and everything, getting through the hole quicker. So if you book their average return, they, they were like last in the Big Ten and punt and kickoff return. So I think they have to do some work on their return team. What yeah. about on? They are catching the ball. Della Valley. Well, yeah, there's no yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's, that's the reason one. they haven't been there for punts. <laughs> punts a little tougher thing to Better catch than Gerald ball. Hodges. The wind blowing up oh, there. Sorry, right. Gerald. <laughs> what about on third downs? Uh, a little bit of an improvement against Kent State. And obviously, Penn State's still putting up points, so it hasn't been as big a concern. But some of those numbers through the first few weeks on third downs were, were a bit concerning. Um, is that an area we'd like to see improve as well? Probably a little bit. Obviously, Penn State likes to go for on fourth down, too. But uh, the third down numbers through the first few weeks were a little concerning. I think Bill O'Brien said it best that it wasn't necessarily just third down. It's keeping on schedule. It's making sure you do the right things on first and second down. Don't have penalties. How many times early in games have they had a key penalty on offense uh, that's maybe wiped something out? So I think if they're able to take care of business on first and second down, third down will take yeah, care they, of itself. Yeah, somebody had a stat. It might have been Steve Jones. That on, it was I'd on the shocked. stat sheet. Uh, it was like the, uh, through the first three games, I think they average about third and eight, seven point six. Or yeah. There you go, like right that, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we saw Alex Butterworth there as well. Bill O'Brien had mentioned that maybe some more consistency out of the punting game as How well. How about Thicken? You talk Thicken's about been him? fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Is it the best story on the well, team? The he other really thing, is. yeah, good point. You know, the other position that I, Akil Lynch. I mean, they haven't used him quite as much as some of the other guys. I mean, his wind has been outstanding. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know. Lynch should be in there in, in, in before Belton. I think that Lynch offers you a little bit more. Uh, see, I think Belton is a great complimentary guy, and I'm a big Akeel Lynch fan. I mean, this guy lights up a room. He's obviously super athletic. Yeah. Uh, but Belton, to me, is another one of those really good bounce-back stories. Struggled last year with the high ankle sprain. He's come in. He didn't get down on himself. Uh, and he's been a nice complimentary guy catching a ball, uh, doing all those little Mike Archie things that I talked about last week. Yeah, plus, he's coming off his best game. You know, Mike, I think Lynch might be playing uh, his way in your mind into the McCoo category. No. <laughs> uh -oh. Is he rising the McCoo? No, don't put the well, McCoo. Listen, I think you know, Penn State has a lot of outstanding athletes down there. And a lot of these positions, they have three deep at running back is yeah, good. That's, that's yeah. a good I mean, point. Yeah. I don't know how you can juggle all that. Bill, that's Bill O'Brien's problem, juggling all these people. They probably have four tight ends and defensive backs and defensive linemen. In fact, I was surprised Kaiser played so much. I don't know, was Willis out for that game? Or no, something? they're listed as an or on the depth Ka chart. I mean, and Kaiser, Kaiser's been good. He, he's, he's yeah, he represented. had the interception yeah. on his head, too. Yeah, yeah broke I'm, up a few I passes. I was surprised. I wasn't a real Kaiser fan, and I like to... The, you know, the, the just did a, just did the, promo yeah, the guy was nice enough to do a promo, and Mike's dogging him. Uh, <laughs> I think Kaiser's been real good for him this year. Maybe give a shout to Obeng Anshapong, too. He switched positions and has been pretty good as well. Um, let's take out. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, if you were, if somebody was as tough on you as you were on Vaughn oh. Walker and Kaiser, well, I, I, looked a lot of film. I looked a lot of film on myself, and I was tough on myself, too. Perfect time to take another break. Uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about Penn State as we enter the Indiana week coming up after the break. Stay with us. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid health care professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South of Altoona, 
Ask for us by name. By JMP Auto, home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. I'm Michael Zordich with the Penn State football team. And you're watching the Nitwits. Michael Zordich with the CPM. Yeah. Welcome back to the Nitwits, the panel, continuing to talk through this bye week as we get you set for the Indiana game coming up this Saturday. We talked about uh, some guys that we've liked in the first uh, four games of the season, guys. A little bit on some, some uh, guys we want to see some improvements from, but uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. Mike, we obviously know you want to see more from Ryan Kaiser, <laughs> yeah. even though after that no, great I'll game. Tell you, it oh, it depends on Ryan Kaiser. When I was watching the game, my wife said to me, he's doing a pretty good job. So at let's least, get her in here. Yeah, at least someone in that family knows Where's football. She knows a lot about football. After, after the game he had against uh, Kent State, That's Mike's out here going, no, He had that interception, that. almost had another pick. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I'll, 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 let me I'll have to watch a few more games. I, you know, I'm not on let the field all the time. Let me try to so save I, him from himself. <laughs> I, I think Adrian Amos is a guy that I did look for a little bit. If you're talking about a segment of guys, because I actually thought he was one of the best couple players on the team coming off last year maybe that was a little high of an expectation and maybe they're throwing away from him but it just seems that maybe some run stuff he had a chance for uh, a big tackle for loss the other day on the reverse and, and I think that was him that missed it and I, I, I just see him raising his level a little bit more yeah I would like to see Williams and Lucas get a little better and I think you will these guys are both real young it's going to be important this week though because uh, Indiana throws the ball an awful lot but I think uh, those are guys that you expected some growing pains from. Deion Barnes is a guy who finally started to come around against Kent State, but I think that uh, that he probably expects more from himself. Uh, and I know a lot of fans do. I know Bill O'Brien say, "Come watch yeah. video with me." I, you know, great. We love the, to. Yeah, the day you let us in to watch video, Bill, <laughs> uh, we'll be in we'll there. Be there. <laughs> but that's a guy that I think they they have to get more from because if your secondary is struggling a little bit, one way to combat that is to get a better pass rush, and their pass rush just hasn't been great so far. And Deion Barnes is a guy who, um, you know, he, he said before, I don't like to leave sacks out on the field. He, he would be a guy that I'd like to see a little bit more from as well. In the you know, I know before we were talking about highlights and lowlights. I mean, I think the low light for this team this year would be the Central Florida game, playing at prime time on national TV and, and losing that game. But, I mean, that, that quarterback was so unbelievable. I yeah. mean, he, he nailed everything he was throwing. And uh, I don't think – I know they play South Carolina this week. And I'm anxious to see how they do against them because my brother-in-law was which will be at w before how, this how run good runs Central right. Florida was, you know, and they were a good team, and I'm I'm anxious to see the them we'll get the whole forward. family involved. <laughs> yeah, you realize, Mike, this will be playing after the <laughs> South well, Carolina. My brother-in-law will be watching <laughs> the Nitwits. Uh, the guy I'm looking for, I, I'm hoping that this week off would have helped Mike Hull because yeah. he got yeah. out of the injury game. wise yeah. well, and everybody was excited about him from last year, and I think they need him. Yeah, he's a real key guy. Let's take one final break, come back, and talk about Penn State's next opponent uh, to begin Big Ten competition. Yeah, first game of the year in the Big Ten Conference, a trip to Bloomington this Saturday. We give you our picks on the other side. Stay with us. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. I'm Adam Gress from your Penn State Nittany Lions. You're watching the Nitwits. Down Sasquatch. Penn State Sasquatch right there, Adam Grass. Good stuff. Welcome back. Uh, our final segment here on the Nitwits. Guys, Indiana up next. Let's go around the panel here and get our picks as we uh, enter Big Ten play. Mike, want to start with you? I'm usually last, but I'll have to go first because doesn't like being I don't want to outdistance these guys <laughs> well, too much. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got a pretty nice lead. You know, right the now. two zeros we got on this <laughs> panel. <you know? laughs> anyway, I, I put it to pick Penn State. I know that surprised you, but I think Penn State. Indiana has a good offensive team, but a terrible defensive team. Yeah. So I'm going to pick Penn State 38, Indiana 20, 18-point spread. 
So you can add that up, Neil, when you try to figure it out, because you haven't figured it out for four weeks. <laughs> That's good, Mike. You're about ready to host this show. <laughs> um, you know, I was going to pick Penn. I was really thinking about picking Indiana in this game, but there's a couple factors that made me change my mind. Uh, I am going to pick Penn State. That is, one, I think they're going to get a real emotional boost from these sanctions in the off week. And two, they've taken their loss against Central Florida, so I'm going to, um, I think, the way Penn State ran the ball, I think Indiana's had trouble stopping the run. I'm going to say uh, Penn State uh, 35, Indiana 27. I'll go next. I'll say 41-28 uh, Penn State. Uh, I agree with a lot of what Neil said, and I would add in that Indiana also has the worst helmets in college football, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And I'd also like to nominate KC for an Academy Award for his new game day commercial. Things <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to take points from all of you, the, the, the Indiana defense, the Penn State three-headed monster running back, and uh, we'll see Hackenberg and Robinson get that chemistry going. I'm going 40-21 to 21 Penn State wins. All right, guys. Going high. I am. You're above Mike. All right. Oh, I'm gonna I, uh, you're it. putting a squeeze on me, Casey. <laughs> I uh -oh. might be. I got to try to gain a bit. <laughs> yeah, we got to yeah, go. Yeah. We got to uh, for everybody. All right. We'll see you next week. <laughs>